Good morning. Welcome to worship this second Sunday after Epiphany. For those of you visiting with us today, I'm Frank Harpster. I'm the senior pastor here at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Ocean City, Maryland, and we welcome you and thank you for worshiping with us. It is good that we can worship together safely from our own locations until that time when we can worship again safely together in one location. Let us now quiet our hearts and our minds and turn our attention to the Lord that we come to worship this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider the generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all that we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's grace and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for your countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues as we hear God's holy word for this day. The first reading for this, the second Sunday after Epiphany, comes to us from the third chapter of 1 Samuel, verses 1 through 20. An introduction to this lesson is as follows. At a time when visions are rare and unexpected, the Lord comes to Samuel and calls him to speak the divine word. Though just a boy, Samuel responds to God obediently as Eli the priest has taught him to respond. This marks the beginning of Samuel's prophetic ministry. And now the reading. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight has begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. 
the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Go lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Word of God, word of life, Thanks be to God. Lord, you have searched me out. Oh, Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created 
my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book, and my days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. The second reading for this, the second Sunday after Epiphany, comes to us from the sixth chapter of St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, reading verses 12 through 20. An introduction to this reading is as follows. Paul helps the Corinthians understand that God has claimed the entirety of their lives through the death of Christ. Hence, Christian relationships and conduct, including areas of human sexuality, are to reflect the reality that we belong to Christ and that the Holy Spirit lives within us. Now the reading. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her. For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. 
When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe me because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, from generation to generation you call us to follow you and to carry the message of grace and love to those around us. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to your call. Teach us to listen to your word and to boldly follow where you lead. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel message this morning from John takes place in a small fishing village on the north side of the Sea of Galilee called Bethsaida. We learned that Bethsaida was a home of a number of the disciples, including Philip, Andrew, and Peter. It was also the place where many amazing things took place. It was there that Jesus walked on water. It was there that Jesus cured the blind man. It was also there that we hear the story of the feeding of the 5,000. In today's gospel, John is continuing to share his story of faith and witness in Jesus as the Messiah and Lord. Just a few verses prior to our message, John was sharing the testimony of John the Baptist concerning Jesus and also the calling of Jesus' first disciples who have also come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Lord. Today we learn of two more, two more disciples, Philip and Nathaniel, being called with an invitation, come and see. Come and see. It is such a simple, open, and gracious invitation. Come and see, for the most part, sums up the heart of Jesus' message, as well as the whole of the Christian life. Come and see is an invitation of grace to be rescued and redeemed. But come and see is a little more powerful, maybe even more challenging than it seems on the surface. The words come and see for the Jewish person means something much more deeper and richer than it would for a Gentile. Judaism is a religion dedicated to the art of listening. The emphasis on listening is one of the Judas one of Judaism's greatest contributions to the human race, especially as it deals with our Lord. To be Jewish is to be a listener. One of the greatest words in the Jewish faith is the word Shema. Shema is a word that is full of many special meanings. To hear, to listen, to pay attention, to visualize, to understand, to internalize, to respond. To obey. Shema means to hear what God is saying. It means to be obedient and respond to the word of the Lord. Shema means to invite God's word not only into your ears and into your mind, but also into your heart. Most cultural anthropologists suggest that the foundation of the majority of the world's culture comes from the ancient cultures of Greece and Israel two vastly different cultures. Greece was fundamentally a visual culture. The greatest accomplishments and its greatest contributions to our world have been those that you take in with your physical eyes. Greece gave our world some of the greatest art, sculptures, architecture that we've ever seen. Greece gave the world some of the greatest theater, literature, and sports that the world has ever seen. Each one of those things are sight-related. The Greeks believed that one gained knowledge through seeing and observing things. That seeing allowed one to gain the ability to have insight, 
foresight, and even hindsight. It is from the Greeks that we get words and ideas such as observation, perception, and illustration. In our Western world, we often use phrases like, now I see, or that shed some light on the subject. Judaism, on the other hand, offers a radical alternative. It's not as if they are opposed to seeing or observing, but the core of the Jewish faith are the words spirit, listening, and connection. God, for a Jew, is a being that we cannot see, and one whom we are commanded to not make any graven images. While the Greeks made millions of little statues and images of their gods and goddesses, the Jews had none. It was written in the very fabric of their faith that no one was to make or even try to make an image of the Lord God Almighty. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, is a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations to those who hate him, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 20, 4 through 6. Instead, they believed that the Lord created them to be a people who concentrated on listening, on hearing and obeying. In Deuteronomy 4.12, we hear these words from Moses in reference to the Lord. You heard the sound of words, but saw no image. There was only a voice. To the Jew, the Lord communicated mainly through words and not through visual sim symbols. God speaks. His word creates. God commands. God invites. God calls. God uses words. Words that need to be heard. Words that connect. Words that create deep and lasting relationship. That is why, to the Jew, the most sacred act is that of listening. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command to you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way or when you lay down and when you rise up. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. Now, of course, the Greeks like to talk and listen, and the Jews created their own particular art and visual items to look at and to wonder. But at their very core of knowledge, for the Greek was their eyes, and for the Jewish person was their ears. Those seem like small differences, but let's look at them when it comes to understanding relationships. For the Greeks, the idea of knowledge allowed a person to be detached from a certain object or subject, even observing from a distance. For example, a person could look at a painting or a sculpture or a play without having to be part of that art or drama. They can enjoy being only a spectator, even from a distance, and they can remain detached. But for Jews, they must be engaged. They must be interactive. It's a relationship. Understanding God, knowing God, therefore requires that we enter into a relationship with God. One could not be detached or isolated or disconnected. The means by which a person enters into a relationship with God is through interaction, through listening and hearing God's word. We hear and listen to God. We speak to God, and God hears and listens to us. Jews would suggest that if you want to know how deep someone's relationship with God is, you don't look at their religious items, but rather you listen to their words. The way they talk about God lets you know how well they know God. 
seeing for the Jew, therefore, is what happens mainly through listening and hearing, following and obeying. Notice, Philip's invitation did not come by way of accident, nor was it a result of a mass evangelism program or message. Philip's invitation was individual. It was personal. As is always the case, the gospel of Jesus is always a person-to-person -person message. Jesus goes to Philip and calls Philip. Philip goes to Nathaniel and witnesses. Jesus then goes to Nathaniel and calls him as well. Person-to-person, heart-to-heart, soul-to-soul, interaction-to-interaction, personal. Thousands of years later, that is still God's plan. Person to person, heart to heart, soul to soul, interaction and relationship. One person telling another person about God's love. One person showing another person that love. One person sharing their story of faith to another person. Paul reminds us, in Romans 10, 14, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? In our culture, there's nothing wrong with those beautiful images and paintings and sculptures that help us to visualize. But in our life of discipleship, we are never merely spectators. We are active participants. I have to wonder sometimes how good we are as listeners in this 21st century. Do we listen with our ears open and our hearts open or are we distracted by other things? Do we listen because the other person has something to share with us or do we tune them out if they have a different perspective than ours or if we have little interest in what they're sharing? Do we listen to hear and understand what they are sharing with us? Or are we simply listening just enough to be able to respond so that we can get our point across or our agenda attended to? Is that the same case when it comes to our relationship with God? When we pray, do we talk to God? Tell God, this is what I need. This is when I need it. This is how you should do it. Or do we talk to God and listen to God? Truly listen for God's response. I wonder how many times we miss God's answers to our prayers because it wasn't the response or the answer we were looking for. Now, more than ever, we need to be listening to God. Now more than ever, we need to be talking about Jesus and to Jesus. We need to be sharing the good news person to person, heart to heart, <coughs> soul to soul, interactively, in ways that we can do so safely. When Philip challenged Nathaniel to come and see, it wasn't just to come and be a spectator and look at this man named Jesus. When Nathaniel heard those words, it was an invitation to come and listen and interact with Jesus. It was a challenge to leave his preconceived notions and to experience this person named Jesus of Nazareth, who indeed good things came from. When others had spent time with Jesus and listened to Jesus, what amazing things do those encounters accomplish? John the Baptist calls Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Andrew called Jesus the Messiah after spending time with him. Philip called Jesus him whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. Even Nathaniel, who had preconceived notions that nothing good came from Nazareth, ended up calling Jesus Rabbi, Son of God, King of Israel. John the Baptist, Andrew, Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel were all transformed because they experienced an epiphany. An epiphany that came by way of personal invitation. An epiphany that came by way of come and see experientially. 
an epiphany that came by way of hearing and receiving Jesus as Rabbi, Messiah, Son of God, King of Israel. An epiphany that was an invitation to connect with the Lord and connect others with the Lord. As we continue through the challenges, tribulations, and trials of a pandemic that has completely changed our world and life as we know it forever, as we witness the increasing rise of separation, violence, hatred, controversy in our leadership and in our world, we may not be simple observers. We must be interactive and active participants sharing God's love and God's grace safely. Remembering, as Paul reminds the Corinthians, our bodies are temples of God, and we must take care of them as such, especially now during this pandemic, following all the safe practices and mandates, socially distancing, wearing masks, staying home, staying safe, and staying healthy as much as possible. We must take care of our temple, and we must also help others take care of their temple. And may we continue to nurture our relationship with our Lord in prayer, speaking to God, and listening to God. May this enrich our relationship with God and our relationship with others, allowing that Holy Spirit to work in, through, and around us, allowing that very grace and love to overpower the brokenness and ugliness in our world, connecting us and keeping us surrounded in that body of Christ, in that love of God. Amen.
Guided by our triune God, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church will live out its calling every day. For ELCA Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Delaware, Maryland Synod Bishop Bill Goal, that their work in directing the church be inspired under the certainty of God's love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for leaders of governments, that they provide protection and safety to all people, especially the most vulnerable, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are imprisoned or homebound, for those who are sick or grieving. Today we lift up Charles Hutter, Jim Stark and family, Kyle Morrison, Janine Height and family, Savannah Bona and family, Violet Green, Charles Kaufman, the family and friends of Bill Weiss, Judy and family, the family and friends of Craig White Sr. Johan and Rosemary Nyquist, Mel and Tony, Kathleen Barclay, Lindsay and family, Craig Tyler and family, Kim Hinkle, Janet Fisher and family, the family and friends of Robin Shipley, Anthony, Leslie, Ron and Pat Hartman, all caregivers, first responders, and all those working on the front lines to save lives, Dog Creek staff and residents. Janine and Ryan and family, Jerry Masick, Ruth Beeson, Don, Carolyn Nuovo, Riley Faith, Val and family, Lance Powell, Norman Holty, Kathy Bornwalker, Ken Ralton, Kate Long, Angela, Beth Lapone, David Patrick and family, Brenda Schumanitz, Joe Smith and family, Bruce, Ron and Barb Hagar, Ann Driscoll, Larry Hager Jr., Ann Hansen, Sherry Pays, Carl Krim, Samara Loss, Nancy Jacoby, Carrie Jacoby, Sonia, Rose, Max, Jody Walensky, Veronica Bona, Brenda Robbins and family, Terry Heather, Kathy Dacoat and family, Barb and Ron Albright, Kathy Watt, Mike Wiley, Gloria Frazier, Patty McDermott, Rick Latshaw, Sandy, Dina Corbello, Ada Mae Shipley, Sue Shoup, Mary Jo Pollock, Kim Raymond, Pastor Sandra Nyler, Frank Harpster, Martin Schroeder and family, George Edel, Fran Dolan and family, Peggy Bell, Carol Robinson, Billy and Maddie Carter, Bernie Hartline, Kim Council, Steve Ellis, Janet Ellis, Peter Avenable. We pray for all those living in assisted living, especially Jenna Anderson, Lisa C., Claire Dykeman, Nim Fritz, Bonnie Lowyski, Ken Wilson. We pray for all those serving in the military, especially George Bennett, Gunnar Bogan, Justin Carter, Cal Kramer, Katie Kramer, Stephanie DeLuccio, Nicholas Nelbaum, David Owens, Joshua Robinson, Nicholas Sorrentino, Jacob Sturgill, Ryan Schindler, Kyle Wood. We lift up all missionaries, especially Aaron Ryan. We lift up our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Bill Gold. We lift up all of our military leaders. We lift up our partners in ministry, especially Grace Lutheran Church in Easton, Maryland, Pastor Kendall Summers. We lift up our G4 partners, Community Lutheran Church, Faith Lutheran Church, Grace of God Lutheran Church, and Pastor Betty Walensky. We lift up those that you now name out loud and quiet in your heart. May 
May God console all who suffer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who need the guidance of the Holy Spirit, especially now to guide them to new paths of mercy, true strength, and forgiveness. For our nation as it struggles, for the world as it struggles, for God's strong love to prevail, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Our worship continues with the offering. While the church building is closed and will remain so until it's safe to open it again, the church is still very much open and active and alive. And that's only possible with your continued support and partnership. We ask that you continue to safely reach out to your family, your friends, your neighbors, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Reach out through telephone or text message, through social media, through pen and paper to reach out and stay connected, to reach out and remind them that they are loved. We also ask for your continued financial support here at St. Peter's. You may do so by sending a check into the church, or you can go to our Facebook page or our website and click on the donate button. And there are also various apps out there which will allow you to make a donation to the church. Our ministry of the month is the Aaron Ryan Missionary Fund. As most of you know, Aaron Ryan is a member here at St. Peter's and she's been doing missionary work in Japan for a little over two years now. And as her church family, we've committed to support her in any way that we can. That includes prayer, and I ask that you please continue to hold Erin, her ministry, and her family in your prayers. And that also includes financial support. In the past, we've been able to do some fundraisers to help with that financial support, but with the pandemic and the building being closed, we're not able to do that. We ask you to prayerfully consider making a donation to the Aaron Ryan Missionary Fund, and you can send that donation to the church um, the same way you would give your other offering. We just ask that you designate it, Aaron Ryan Missionary Fund. We thank you for your support and for your partnership, and we thank God for the way he blesses our efforts for his good and his purpose. Let us pray. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care. And empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Would you pray with me in the words our Savior taught us? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
my sisters and brothers in Christ. May God the Creator strengthen you, Jesus the Beloved fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. Oh, 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 oh. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my sight. High above my life, I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. You love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow. Yeah, I will follow you, yeah. Light into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone. No, the one I see, no, I will find all I need. I'll stay when you move I'll move I will follow you when you love I'll love how you serve I'll serve in this life I lose I will follow you yeah I will follow you yeah in you there's life everlasting in you there's freedom I lose, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, I'd like to share a few announcements before we conclude our worship service for today. Next Sunday, January 24th, we will be blessed to be worshiping with folks all around our synod online as the LYO, the Lutheran Youth Organization, leads us in worship. As most of you know, they generally have their gathering here in Ocean City this time of year, um, and they usually spend some time over at St. Peter's but with the pandemic, they're not able to do that. So instead, they were able to put together a worship service, and they'll be leading us. So you'll do it the same way we did today. Go to our website and click on the worship service video button, and that will premiere at 9 a.m. Just a reminder, as the building's closed, the church is still very much open and active and alive. We continue to feed folks on Wednesdays from 12 to 1.30. I ask that you please continue to hold that ministry. Doug and Linda Harry, who are overseeing it, and especially our brothers and sisters in Christ who don't have enough to eat, please hold them in prayer and surround them with your love. We also continue to host the Cold Weather Shelter on the nights that it's too cold for our sisters and brothers to be outside. And we bring our homeless sisters and brothers in. We feed them. We give them a hot shower and a nice warm bed to sleep in. I ask that you please hold those folks in your love and prayers as well. Just a reminder, Amy's in the office Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4, and Fridays, 8 to 1. You may call her, text her, or email her. Any correspondence, we ask that you send through email or the postal service. If there's anything I can do for you, 
please, I'm always available by phone, text, or email. If you need me to pick up prescriptions or medications for you or to pick up food or drop off a mask or devotional, please let me know. I'll be happy to do that. As this pandemic continues to spiral out of control, killing more and more people, I ask you to do all that you can to follow the mandates and safe practices, to stay home, to stay safe, to stay healthy, to save lives. Please know how much we love you and value you, and your health is very important to us. Please join us on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. for our online worship service, on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. for our online Bible study led by Pastor Harry, and on Fridays at 4 p.m. for our online connection hour or happy hour. Information for all of that is on our website, as well as the, the connection links for that. Please know that I love you, your church family loves you, and most of all, God loves you. Named and claimed as God's beloved son or daughter, go in peace to love and serve your Lord and neighbor. Thanks be to God.